Okay, so the Lord of the Rings cards have started being spoiled, so today let's talk about the first legendary creature we've been shown. Gandalf the Grey is a 3-4 legendary avatar wizard that costs 3 blue-red that says, Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, choose one that hasn't been chosen. You may tap or untap target permanent. Gandalf the Grey deals 3 damage to each opponent. Copy target instant or sorcery spell you control, you may choose new targets for the copy. And finally, put Gandalf on top of its owner's library. So immediately we see that Gandalf sticks to the wizard trope of being a spellcaster, and that's not something that Magic the Gathering is lacking right now. Spellcasting decks have a few directions that they usually take. The spells that give him multiple extra turns to win with combat or other combos, or spells that burn their opponents to win the game, or combos to burn their opponents. I'm not well versed in Spellslinger decks, so if I'm missing a direction here, please let me know in the comments below what I'm missing here. Gandalf actively helps both of those strategies with the abilities on the card, dealing 3 damage to each opponent and copying spells you cast. Tapping and untapping a permanent can help cast spells if you untap a mana producer. It can probably also open up combo potential depending on what artifact you're untapping. The last trigger though is what lowers the power of this card considerably. Put Gandalf on top of its owner's library. Once you cast your fourth spell, Gandalf goes on top of your library, and you can no longer take advantage of his more useful abilities. Unless, of course, you decide to run blink cards like Deadeye Navigator or Essence Flux. By blinking Gandalf, the creature resets and you can choose any of the abilities again when you cast an instant or sorcery spell. While this certainly will sound fun and interesting to some, it sounds like an absolute stacks nightmare to me. Now that I think about it, cloning Gandalf might be pretty funny also. Irenicus's Vile Duplication would get you three copies of Gandalf if you copy the spell with Gandalf when you cast it. Again, creating a stacks nightmare that your opponents will have to live through. Maybe the real challenge to playing a Gandalf the Grey deck will be to finish the game with Gandalf without your opponents scooping to boredom. It's absolutely going to be interesting to see what people can do with this card, but let's talk about the showcase version of this card. Depicting the fall of Gandalf the Grey to the Balrog in the Mines of Moria is it's just a beautifully presented piece of art. The elvish script surrounding the image is wonderfully done, and I'm curious if that text is the same as the text on the One Ring, so maybe some Tolkien scholars will be able to tell us about that later. And even though I do think they should have taken the opportunity to make this a transforming card, where Gandalf the Grey becomes a very powerful Gandalf the White, I do like the flavor this brings to Spellslinger decks wanting the wizardest of wizards to lead the deck. Let me know what you think of Gandalf the Grey in the comments below and please let me know how you would build this deck. Like I said earlier, I'm not a Spellslinger player, so my inexperience hurts my analysis of this card. But until next time, if, mm, like the video if you liked the video, dislike it if you disliked it, and until next time, I'm Space Coconut, and you're welcome. <laughs>